Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but, cool thing about what you're reading, those are actually reproductions of the original manuscript. So it's not like a photocopy, and it's not Oliver Cowdery's handwriting, but they tried to reproduce what the original manuscript looks like. So the little crossing out that are on there is what's actually on that original manuscript. And there's more of those pages up in the visitor center for you to look at. There's a giant kiosk where you can pretend to be a scribe, so you can also flip through some manuscript pages. And I guess the originals were... They're probably gone. Yeah, disintegrated. A lot of them were disintegrated, but there now. are some that have survived. Really? Are they in Salt Lake? Is that... Uh, what would they, they do? They are currently most under um, possession of the, of the reorganized church, the Community oh. of Christ. Okay. There's one that is, um, it was not ever, um, I don't know if it was because there might have been faults with it or whatever, but it's in the Edie Grandin building. It's um, where they were that might the printing, where the first printing was. Mm -hmm. That might be portions of the printer's manuscript. Yeah. There was two, two manuscript pages. The one that Oliver originally was scribing, and then an additional where he went back and included punctuation and that kind of a thing. So. Oh, that makes sense. Yep. There are a couple of different manuscript pages, but this is a really good way to and visualize what the translation process might have looked like with Joseph and Oliver sitting here um, translating day after day and hour after hour. Sometimes they locked the door, sometimes they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyone could come in. And... Right. Well, but we, we love to, uh, to talk about Know, what Joseph had to say about the translation process and that how it was done by the gift and the power of God and how truly um, a marvelous work and no wonder it was. We, um, we don't know a lot of details about how that translation took place, but um, Joseph provides the testimony that we need, that it was done to by the gift and power of God. And I think that it shows Joseph's humility, really, that he was willing to to recognize our Father in Heaven in this work and recognize that without Him, then it would not have been possible. These truly are inspired words and, and another testament of Jesus Christ. That's something that I loved about the film this time around. We mentioned that as we watch it, we often learn something new and almost every time I learn something new in this time around, I was thinking about the fact, I mean, it's artistic rendition of that film is showing truth, but some of it, it took artistic liberty. But I, Liberty, but I love that Joseph and Oliver, before they get started, Joseph started with a prayer and he asked for the Spirit to be with them and he thanked Heavenly Father for sending Oliver to help. And I just love that example of Joseph's humility there. Even though he was the prophet, even though the Lord had given him this marvelous work to do, Joseph knew that he was reliant on the Lord. Joseph didn't have any qualification of his own right that allowed him to translate ancient scripture, but because he was so close to the Lord and because he relied on Him, he was strengthened through it and he was given help. People like Oliver, people like Emma, have supported him so much throughout it all. And I think about times in my life where I've been really prideful and really stubborn and hard-headed and just doing my own thing. And I wasn't as happy and I wasn't as fulfilled as when I took the time to humble myself. And say, Heavenly Father, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'll trust you. And I'll trust your will above my own. And that's when I've been supremely blessed. If I hadn't done that, then I would not be here on a mission. But I'm grateful for the example that we have, the times in our own lives that we have to turn to the Lord and the examples of history like Joseph, who so readily turned to the Lord for help. And Joseph had to turn to our Father in Heaven a lot, and especially during the portion of time where he, or the manuscript pages had been lost, and the Book of Mormon and the gift of translate was ta translation was taken away, and Joseph was left here with Emma to mourn the loss of his, his firstborn son, and I guess his son was not named. No, he was not. Um, but I, I often reflect upon what, what a time that was for Joseph to, to turn to our Father in Heaven to rely on that cleansing power of the atonement, to have a first town, a first hand experience of that, <coughs> gain a testimony of his own. And, and the part I like the part um, when he found out that babies wouldn't go to hell because they weren't baptized. And he went to Lots of Emma. different truths were, were brought to Joseph and Emma's attention as they were reading the Book of Mormon. Just like how we experience the same thing as we read the Book of Mormon. Those, those experiences, us reading 
um, can be just as revelatory as when Joseph and Emma were reading for the very first time. And just to explain for you to that, I like that you brought that up. Back then, they didn't believe that children, if they passed away before they were baptized, they didn't think that they were saved. They thought they were damned. And so what a marvelous truth for them to read as they were um, translating the Book of Mormon, that that infant, that child that they would have would be okay. And we don't know for sure what what the case was for Joseph and Emma, but all that's on that tombstone that's in the cemetery is an infant son of Joseph and Emma. And in a time where you thought your child was lost forever, I would imagine it'd be hard to have that type of attachment. But what marvelous truth the Book of Mormon brought forth for them. And is there a date on the tombstone? Oh, wow. Is, this, is he still born? He was born struggling, so he lived for an hour and then he died. Yeah. But we're in the space where 70% of the Book of Mormon was translated, and that was Mosiah and Moroni. Is there anyone that has a favorite scripture that we could read here while we're in this space? Uh, I forget where it is, where Alma talks about the seed. Alma uh, 32. Yeah. Oh, that is. That's some great scriptures right there. I was actually just reading the first part of that chapter this morning in my personal study. So, um, was there a specific verse that you were thinking of? Uh, no, uh, just the part about faith and that it grows like a seed. I forget exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm severely paraphrasing it. <laughs> you are just fine. Um, and what's this where there's chairs? Is that where they did church? We'll go there next. Uh -huh. One verse, um, verse 27. And it says, But behold, if you will awake and arouse your faculties, that's it, even to experiment upon my words and exercise a particle of faith, yea, even if you can have no more than desire to believe, let this desire work in you, even until you believe in a manner that you can give place for a portion of my words. And I think that that scripture fits perfect here because so much faith was exercised here by Joseph and by Emma and by Oliver. Um, of course, they, the spirit of the Lord was so, so strong here and so a part of their lives and helping them along every, every step of the way. However, there were still some hard times and um, faith was definitely exercised and I am so very grateful for it their example to me as to how I can better rely on my Father in Heaven and exercise and awake, awake my faculties to to plant this, this good seed within within my heart. What was that scripture with us? So this is Alma 32, 27. <laughs> I've been highlighting special scriptures along the way and I'm challenged when it comes to remembering stuff like that. So. We can put it on the sticky note for you. Ponderize. Didn't what's his name come up with that word? Ponderize? I forget which. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But there is one more space that we can go into and there's right. benches for us to sit on. They didn't have them back then, right. so feel free to rest your feet and sit on those benches back there. There's also a small step, so be careful where the lift. Yeah, be mindful. a little bit farther. This is the room. Everything Excuse me. So, is this where church was held for the first meeting? No, the church is actually organized in Bay Yet. Um, it was on April 6th of 1830. And then, what was it, what, Tuesday or something? Mm, I'm not sure if that's the day of the week. It might be. I, I don't know. Why would that be a Tuesday? Mm -hmm. Just doing some mental math. What's the square root of 49? I don't know. Then you shouldn't be doing mental <laughs> math. I'm better with dates. But some fun things. Are there any questions about what you see here in this space? What are those orange things? <laughs> you want to take a guess? Are those pumpkins? Wow. Are they like flower type? I don't know. Fred? Yes! Cheese! Look over here! They're cheese! Yep, cheese bills. Cheese! So that's where they kept their cheese. <laughs> Emma had two dairy cows that she would use to help provide some of the income for the family. And part of that might have been cheese and with milk and drain butter and everything like that. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, 
this was just a space that Joseph added on to his home that they could have done. I'm not sure what the process is for cheese making, but a workspace that they have. So Joseph had his I think it's milk and vinegar in there. So this Separate the whey from the curds. Just fine. This, this room that we're Did you know in that? is nope. the summer kitchen. And it was used for lots of different things. And it was built on later by Joseph while the Book of Mormon was being printed and published. Um, they wouldn't be able to use this portion of the home for very long. They would leave um, eventually in the late summer of 1830 and go to Fayette. And then from there, Joseph and Emma would receive the revelation to go to the Ohio and and even further and further west from there. But when they did they just pick up and leave or did they sell the place? They did eventually sell it, but not actually for a few years later. Joseph um, made a profit on the land and, and the property here, um, but they, they did end up selling it. And when they left here, Emma, she would never see her parents again. Isaac would die just nine years after they would leave, and then Elizabeth shortly thereafter. She never saw her parents again? No. She Did she didn't. communicate with them with, like, letters? and? We have a record of a letter that Emma wrote to her mother just shortly after her father died. But that was nine, nine years. And in that letter... She's stating the names of the children that she's lost since then, which kind of gives us an idea that she didn't have much communication with her family previous to that. So where... So their family relationship really wasn't the best? You know, we, we don't really know. We don't know if if there was some hard feelings or, or if they were okay, or even if there was communication. Um, there are a lot of things that we don't busy. know. Things weren't easy. Yeah. It's it's hard to know. Yeah. But what we do know is, is just that. And Emma showed a lot of courage in doing that. I can't imagine growing up in a city or an area and, you know, staying there after getting, well, I mean, she went to Palmyra for a little bit, but staying roughly in the same area, but then having my family not be very supportive of what I was doing and then having, you know, to, to leave. But... I guess it's different when you know that the Lord is the one that's urging it, that it's not someone else doing it, but having that faith in the Lord. And that's what she had to have, or else, why else, how else could she have done that? How else could have Joseph and Emma put, given up their roots, their, their homestead here that they thought they were going to live in forever, to go out and to follow the Lord? It was because of the faith that they had, and also the hope that the gospel was bringing them. They have the Book of Mormon that they've translated now, that they've read, printed and published, the church is organized, they have the priesthood, they have that promise and that connection to the Heavenly Father. The priesthood does, it, does wonders for us. It blesses us immensely. We know we have a Heavenly Father who loves us and a Savior who's atoned for our sins. But the priesthood is what allows us to make those connections, those, those ties, those covenants that bind us to our Heavenly Father. And it's what allows us to access the power of the atonement, to help us become clean, to help us be ready to make it back to live with Heavenly Father. And I think that the, the covenants that they had made and the promise of further, further knowledge, further blessings would be what could help them overcome that obstacle and that trial and continue to trust in the Lord. And that's the same same for us today. We don't always see the light at the end of the tunnel. We don't always know the whole plan, but we have faith and we have covenants that we can make with Heavenly Father that assure us that there is hope ahead and that there is that promise that we can make it back and make it back and stay in Heavenly Father's presence too. So just in closing, we want to invite you to continue to to reflect upon those covenants that you've made at baptism and, and in the temple and to be more mindful of them and and study them a little bit more and to um, to try to recognize how the priesthood has blessed you in in your own particular lives i know that before serving here i i was definitely not aware but since being here and as I've studied and pondered and prayed, I've definitely had a strengthened testimony of the priesthood and of those covenants and those binds that we do have with our Father in Heaven and are so blessed to be able to take part in. And so we want to, to leave 
that that invitation with you. Um, will you will you do that? Will you study? Yes. Thank you. Well, we just want to to close, um, kind of the, in the way that we started, remembering our Savior and remembering that all of these things that happened here um, are because of Him, mm -hmm. and are meant to help us come closer to Him. And we say that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.